Hi everyone! Dr. Gator Bedavitas here, your board certified dermatologist. So I mentioned before that I plan to do a series all about acne and today's video is going to be part of that. So I'm going to be talking about acne myths and I really believe that it's important to address them, to correct these myths, to give the facts because it will make a big difference for those who have acne in terms of how they approach treatment and how they view themselves. Acne is one of the most common conditions that we dermatologists treat and I believe that it's our responsibility to educate our patients and one of them is by debunking and dispelling myths that are going around. There are actually a lot out there. You see them on social media, on magazines, sometimes you hear them on TV. But I have picked 10 that I feel some individuals still believe to be true. Myth number one, acne is just a cosmetic condition. Acne is a common condition that requires medical treatment. It is due to an interplay of many factors which include your genetics, your hormones, follicular plugging, and bacterial colonization. While it may seem like a superficial concern, acne when left untreated can result in permanent scarring. It is not just a cosmetic concern because sometimes acne can be indicative of other medical conditions like your polycystic ovarian syndrome. Also, individuals, especially those with severe acne, may experience low self-esteem, anxiety, and even depression which need to be addressed. Myth number two, acne only happens to teenagers. You know, I actually used to believe this to be true. I used to think that you know, you eventually outgrow your acne, that when you reach 30, no matter what happens, your acne stops. But while it's true that about 80 to 85 percent of adolescents or teenagers suffer some form of acne, be it comedonal, mild to severe, it actually doesn't always disappear when you reach adulthood. In some individuals, they can actually persist. And in my experience, I've seen some patients in whom they never had acne when they were young, like really clear when they were teenagers. But then when they turned 30, 35, that's when they started getting acne lesions. Studies in the US indicate that about 40 to 55% of adults have been diagnosed with acne. Now we go to myth number three. This one I think a lot of people continue to believe. They feel that acne is caused by dirt, oil, and grease that haven't been properly washed off from the face. In truth, hygiene has nothing to do with acne. Acne is a complex condition that happens in our pilosebaceous units or those pores on our skin where sweat and hair come out and it's totally unrelated to dirt. Although we always say that it's important to clean your skin to prevent buildup of dirt, dead skin cells, and debris, having them on your skin doesn't always and is not the cause of acne. Comedones or those tiny bumps that you feel on your skin if you have acne that are not painful, not itchy, also known as blackheads and whiteheads, are not caused by dirt. Rather, they are due to excessive or increased oil production that causes our dead skin cells to stick together and not properly get exfoliated and therefore leading to clogged pores. When bacteria that is naturally found on our skin called QT bacterium acnes is added into the equation, inflammation occurs and that's when we develop our acne lesions. I always clarify and dispel this myth in all of my patients because when you believe that dirt, oil, and grease can cause acne, it can lead to overwashing and overexfoliation using your soaps, harsh cleansers, abrasives, even cleansing brushes that can lead to our barrier disruption and disruption of our skin's natural lipids, causing us to have dry and dehydrated skin, which then leads to compensation by producing more oil. And this can lead to even more breakout or an exacerbation of your existing acne. Myth number four, wearing makeup can cause acne and lead to breakouts. 
So there's actually one type of acne that is caused by using certain skincare products and cosmetics, including makeup, and it is called acne cosmetica. So this type of acne is due to the pore clogging properties of certain types of ingredients. And in order for you to resolve this, what you have to do is just to stop or discontinue using these products. Putting on makeup, such as your foundation, your BB creams, your concealers, is okay as long as you choose those that will not clog your pores. So how do you know that? When buying products, make sure to check the label and the packaging and look for the following. Non-comedogenic, non-acnegenic, oil-free, and won't clog your pores. In fact, a lot of products out there in the market, for example, concealers, actually contain ingredients that help cover up your redness and some small pimples. They may contain your benzoyl peroxide, your sorcinol, or salicylic acid that can improve your acne lesions. Others even contain ingredients that help absorb excess oil, can be soothing with anti-inflammatory properties, and all of these can reduce skin irritation and repair your skin barrier. When wearing makeup, remember to put it on gently using your own brushes. Do not share and do not borrow from someone else. Make sure that your brushes are regularly cleaned so that it doesn't accumulate all the oil, the dirt, and even microbes that can lead to breakouts and exacerbation of your acne lesions. Also, always remember to take them off before going to bed. Never sleep with your makeup on. And when removing your makeup, make sure that you use gentle makeup removers such as your balm emulsions or your micellar cleansers. Do not use harsh makeup removers or brushes and then Rinse your face with lukewarm water and a gentle cleanser afterwards to prevent skin irritation. Myth number five, moisturizers cause acne. Now this is quite a controversial topic and I'm sure most of you who read a lot um, will hear conflicting views, but moisturizers are meant to hydrate the skin. So, if you think about it, it has nothing to do with acne. In fact, I mentioned earlier, when your skin is dry and dehydrated, it has a tendency to compensate by producing more oil, which we know is a big problem when you have acne. Some studies even show that regular use of moisturizers can enhance efficacy, alleviate dryness, and improve patient comfort in those who are applying topical anti-acne treatments like your antibiotics, your retinoids, your salicylic acids, or those who are taking oral isotretinoin. Moisturizers are definitely not something that can cure your acne lesions, but using them, especially if you use the right kind for your skin, will definitely not make your acne worse. So in my opinion, if you have you know, oily, acne-prone skin, using a lightweight moisturizer such as your gel-based or water-based moisturizers on a regular basis will prevent dehydration and will prevent your face, your skin from compensating by producing more oil. Before I go on to the next myth, if you're enjoying this so far and if you think you're getting something out of it, please click the like and subscribe. Myth number six. So this one is kind of related to um, another acne video that I did all about food. And I also used to believe this when I was younger. Chocolates and greasy food can cause acne. I'm sure everyone will agree that having a healthy balanced diet is good for the body and not just our skin. However, some of us might put the blame on certain foods that we eat when acne lesions or some pimples start popping up. If you've watched my video on um, food causing acne, you will know that chocolates, greasy food, you know, fried food do not cause acne. However, there is growing evidence that consuming food high in simple sugars, in refined carbohydrates, and even dairy can cause a spike in our insulin, which is then related to increased incidence of breakouts and exacerbation of your acne lesions. Myth number seven. This one, I'm sure at least one of you have tried it before and not just for pimples. Toothpaste is a great way to clear acne. 
I've used toothpaste before, not for acne though. I've used it for burns. You know, because of that cooling and soothing sensation, you feel that it may have some anti-inflammatory effect. Toothpastes may contain any of the following ingredients, your baking soda, your hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, sometimes even triclosan that can dry or, you know, temporarily improve your pimples. But remember that toothpastes are not meant to be put on our skin. They're meant to be used on our teeth. So if you apply them on your skin, it can actually cause redness, irritation, and even allergies. Also, most toothpastes contain fluoride, which can actually lead to breakout and can exacerbate existing acne lesions. Instead of using toothpaste to temporarily remedy your pimple, you can opt to just buy, you know, spot treatments from your drugstores that contain salicylic acid, your clindamycin, or your benzoyl peroxide. Myth number eight. Now this one I'm sure everyone has tried at least once in their lives. Um, it's squeezing or popping out our pimples will make it heal faster. Now I remember way back in high school or maybe that was college when you have this really, really ripe pimple with that white and yellow thing peeping out and you just feel that squeezing it and removing the contents will make your pimple go away. I was guilty of that and I've done it, you know, more than 10 times in my entire life. And sometimes it does improve, but most of the time it ends up making my acne lesions worse. It's because when you try to squeeze your pimple, sometimes you end up pushing your bacteria, the dead skin cells and debris deeper into your skin, which can spread it and lead to more inflammation and more infection. Now, when more inflammation and more swelling and infection happens, this can actually lead to scarring. So don't try to squeeze your pimples on your own, no matter how clean you may think your fingernails are, even if you use Q-tip. I know that sometimes I still do that, but please try to avoid that. It is best to leave your pimple alone and let it heal on its own using, of course, your anti-acne medications. But for those emergency situations, like a wedding, an event, or a party, or a, you know, a big celebration, and you have that pimple that you really want to get rid of, just come to us, your dermatologists. We can do a proper incision and drainage to empty the contents of your pimple using steroid equipment, or we can just do an interlesional steroid injection. Myth number nine. Acne medications are supposed to work immediately. I know that having acne can be annoying, it can be distressing, and you really want to get rid of it right away. But just as acne lesions don't really develop overnight, it will also take some time and a lot of patience to clear them up. And it's not the same for everyone. I always tell my patients, on average, it takes about 12 weeks of you know taking in your antibiotics or your isotretinoin or applying your medications to see significant results. Maintenance is also very important. If you discontinue your treatment the moment you see improvement, your acne can relapse as well. Now we go to the final myth, myth number 10. There exists a miracle skincare treatment out there that will clear your acne. You just have to find it. I'm talking about all those products that you see out there in your social media pages, in stores, and in ads, promising to cure your acne, complete with testimonials from individuals with their experiences with using the products. And you might think, hey, if it worked for them, it must work for me, right? The truth is, yes, some over-the-counter products actually work for those with mild acne. In fact, even slight changes in your skincare routine can improve mild acne. However, for those with moderate to severe lesions, you will really need prescription strength medications to clear your skin. But really, when it comes to acne, especially those with moderate to severe conditions, the first step should be to come to us, your board-certified dermatologist, so that you can be properly assessed and given the appropriate treatment. It is during the consultation that we formulate or strategize a plan that is tailor-fitted to your needs. 
of course, we take into consideration your skin concerns, your preferences, and your lifestyle. So there you have it. 10 myths and misconceptions about acne, corrected and clarified. So this ends my video. Again, one of several videos I plan to do all about acne. I hope that I was able to correct some of the myths that some of you might believe. And again, if this is valuable to you, if you learned a lot, um, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And please watch out for my other videos. I will see you again soon. Bye!